Welcome back to the final drop of today's Splash of Pain, where it's time for us to revisit contemporary oil artist Marion Dutton as she completes the final stages of her inspirational demonstration and discover how simple underpainting can help produce the perfect background to your finished painting. So earlier in the programme, we started this lovely portrait of Jerry, my uh, beautiful King Charles Spaniel. So I'm just going to continue with that now. So I'm going to go into some burnt umber. And again, I'm just looking for the lights and darks within the portrait. I really want to establish this lovely dark area around the ears to separate the um, face from the ears as well. So again, keeping everything nice and soft. Now, when you have curly hair like this, there is absolutely no way you can really paint every single individual strand. So the way to do it really is to pick out one or two definite curls, go with them and the rest of it you can get away with making it up. So I'm going to um, dip into some thinner now and again using the brush as an eraser I'm going to start pulling out some of these beautiful light curls that I can see in the ears. Again, I'm not trying to copy these exactly. You know, your painting will look so much fresher if you keep things nice and loose. And you get the general. Nobody's ever going to notice if a particular curl is not in exactly the right place. But if you can follow one or two of these feature curls, he's got some lovely curls that wrap around up here. So I'll pull those out. Again, I'm just applying the thinner on there. And if I have to go over the stroke once or twice to remove the paint, then that's what I'll do. He's got some lovely little pieces that fall. Again, playing light against dark. You've got this lovely dark area, and you could pull a couple of little lighter strands against that dark. And the rest of it, once I've established those major curls that I can see, I'm going to kind of make the rest up. As long as I'm following in the direction of the fur, everything will all work out. Now I'll do the other side. He's got some beautiful light curls. The light's hitting him on this side. So again, I'm using a nice wiggly stroke. Get some of those lovely lights in there. And this is so much easier than trying to paint around these lighter areas. I'm not worrying about the background. Typically, um, I would do an underpainting and I'd do the background at the same time or after I'd completed the underpainting and just melt the edges into the background to avoid a sort of cut-out look. Okay, so I'm going to start doing a little bit of shading around this neck area. Now, because I'm on the lighter fur, I'm just going to um, dip into some linseed oil. I wipe that excess away, and I've got a lighter controlled amount on here. So we'll start getting in some of this lighter fur around the neck. And I will soften, go back to the old warm brush, and I will soften where I've got some harder hedges starting to form there. So again, just keep softening all your edges. Okay, so I'm going to switch now to a smaller brush. Back into the thinner. And I'm going to start pulling out some of these... these um, hairs that I can see under the neck area. Try and establish the direction of the hair growth. Again, and I'm playing light against dark, this beautiful dark here. And I'm going to pull some of these lovely tufts of fur into this darker area. So all the time I'm aware of the angle of these curls said I'm not trying to copy every one but if you get a general feel you can usually pull off a very convincing pet portrait. 
He's got some lovely curls going under his neck here. Now this is a beautiful pose. Now I have my daughter holding a treat up for him while I took this photograph. And it is important to get a really nice pose. And typically, um, for dog portraits, it's usually better getting someone to give you a hand while you're doing the photographs. Someone can uh, hold a treat or a toy up for them, while you can get down to the dog's eye level and take a really nice pose. So I'm keeping everything soft, being aware of all my edges. He's got some lovely light up here, so we'll get those in. Now he's got a beautiful light. The light is hitting him from the right, and he's got a beautiful light right on this muzzle area. I'm going to go in there, and again, this pulls his face away from the background. Now I don't want hard edges, so I'm going to go back and soften those edges. Start getting some more of these little hairs. So you can see how the form is created just by the lights and the darks. So again, back to the old warm brush, give it a good white, and I'm going to just soften these edges again. So I'm establishing the direction of the fur Okay, I think we'll do a little bit more detailed work on the eye area. So this time I'm using the um, burnt umber and I'm using it quite thick now with no um, oil added to it. And I want to really get these lovely dark pupils in there. And he's got some beautiful darks around his eyes. And this will help set the eyes into the socket. Now take your time with these. The more time you spend on um, underpainting, the better the finished painting will end up. In my opinion, this is the, the uh, most important stage of a portrait. You establish your drawing, you establish your lights and darks. And if you can get your portrait to look like your person or your pet in just one colour, you'll make life so much easier when you come to add the colour layers to it. These actually look beautiful, even at this unfinished stage. They could look, you know, they could easily pass for a finished portrait as, uh, you know, like a sepia portrait. So I'm softening again, keeping those edges nice and soft. Now, no worries where my hand has been, that's fine. I'll just blend that out, the beauty of oils. Keeping everything nice and soft. Let's do a little bit more detailed work on those ears. Really start to go in now and pull out some of these darker areas that I can see in between these curls. Put the dark in round the neck area. Again, just separating the neck and the ears. And don't be afraid of going dark on this. It will not tarnish or tint the um, coloured layers at all. It will just help you with all the lights and darks when you come to uh, do the colours. Now this is an old master technique, doing underpaintings. It's been around for a long, long time. And some people do underpaintings in black and white. I just prefer to do this in the burnt umber. It's a lovely soft colour. Um, and then bring, use the white of the canvas for my, my lighter areas. Now you would let this fully, fully dry before you begin to um, start putting the colour glazes over this. 
and that is very important. So I'm going to start working now on a little bit of the detail area. He's got some markings around his face. He's got some lovely markings around his eyes. Again, like I said, typically something like this would take me a couple of hours. And it is worth spending that time on it. Let's get some little details around the nose area. This beautiful dark lip that he's got here. You can actually see he's looking very intently. And my daughter was holding a biscuit for him at this point. Okay, I'm just going to establish a little bit more shading under the neck area to really set this, uh, his head back. And again, I'm going to switch now to the blending brush and keep it all soft. So the procedure is the same throughout the entire portrait. As you will apply your darks, you'll take off your lights and you'll soften all your edges. You're looking to complete this portrait in one single colour. And you would do the same for the colour, whatever was in the portrait, um, whether it's clothes or for a person portrait, you would treat it exactly the same. The colour of the subject or the um, object that you're painting is absolutely irrelevant. Um, you do it all in this one tone, this under, um, umber underpainting. And just keep all your edges soft. Again, whether it's a person portrait or a pet portrait, just make sure all your edges are soft. So I'm hoping that's give you a real taste of an underpainting. And like I said, I will continue the rest of this and it would take me a few hours um, to complete this. I'd be constantly looking at pulling out some lights, adding in some darks, softening the edges. Um, but I'm hoping this has given you a real taste of an underpainting. In my opinion, it is the key to a successful portrait. So here is the finished portrait of Jerry. This painting's titled My Boy. And hopefully you can see that the underpainting, I, I've painted this exactly the same way as the demo that I've shown you today. Uh, and the underpainting really is the key to establishing um, a good portrait. It's used as your map for your colour layers later on. Now this may have had about three or four different layers on that, but that underpainting really, really helped me establish a real good foundation for the portrait. So do give it a go. I think it's something you'll enjoy. It does simplify the painting process. Pet portraits can be complicated and I do think this really does help it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching today um, and I'll see you all again soon. Brilliant, so it's great to see how a simple technique can produce such stunning results. And I hope Marion has inspired you to experiment with underpainting and introduce you to your next project. Now, before we end today's programme, I've just got time to answer a few viewers' questions. First of all, a question has been sent in which says, why would you use salt on watercolour painting? Well, basically the answer to this is to give special effects. You can very lightly sprinkle salt over the sky while it's damp, while the paint is damp, and it lifts little bits of colours off and produces like a nice falling snow effect. It's also used really well for brick walls, that kind of thing, and it's a very nice little technique. I use salt all the time. It gives texture and it can just give an interesting effect. It's great for the background of a, a nice um, flower painting. Sprinkle it on while the paper is wet and the paint will really lift off. But the thing to remember it is one grain of salt is literally one little spot of light colour. So just be a bit cautious. And the best thing to do is experiment with it. The second question that's come through is when painting in mixed media, can acrylic be painted over the top of oils and vice versa? Pretty straightforward answer to this one. When you're working with oil paint over the top of acrylics, that's fine because acrylic dries with a matte surface, but because oils dries with a glossy surface, when you put acrylic over the top, it doesn't stick to the surface. A lot of people use acrylic primers for oil painting, so that's perfectly fine. 
Um, so that's it folks for today and I'll see you again soon. To enjoy another splash of paint and discover more inspirational programs to unlock your artistic talent, click on the Painting and Drawing Channel logo at www.saa.co.uk and catch up with TV anytime.